This video shows how to create a multi-device application using C++ Builder for the Android target platform. Before you start to develop mobile Android applications using C++ Builder, you need to complete some Android configuration steps. To make the Android configuration steps easy for you, the C++ Builder installation lets you install the needed Android SDK, Android NDK, and the Java Development Kit. After the install, your C++ Builder SDK Manager is now configured for the Android target platform with the correct SDK, NDK, and JDK. So now you can start building Android applications using your C++ Builder. The first step is to create a new multi-device application for C++. The multi-device application wizard appears. Here we can select a multi-device application type such as header footer, header footer with navigation, master detail, tabbed, tabbed with navigation, 3D application, or a blank application. So let's select blank application that lets us create a completely custom multi-device application. The form designer shows a new form from the project manager pane. We select the Android target platform for Android, but we see we can also target iOS, Mac OS 10 desktop, and Windows platforms, all from the same application. Since we are targeting Android, we'll select Android from the style drop-down menu in order to define the master view to show all the properties related with our Android style. The first step in creating a multi-device application is designing the user interface. Now there are many reusable components available in the C++ Builder IDE for creating user interfaces. From the tool palette, under the standard category, we see many common user interface components to add to our form. So let's say we want to create a hello world type of application where the user can enter their name into a text box and then click a button and have a label display hello and the username you typed in the edit box. First I'll select an edit box component and add it onto the form. Uh, next I'll place a label on the form. And lastly, we'll add a button onto our form. Quickly rearranged our edit box, our label, and our button, so it now looks like this on our form. Looking at the object inspector, we see that for each component, we have several properties and several events that we can set and use in our application. First, I'll select our edit box and I'll set its kill focus by return property to true. Now this kill focus by return property specifies whether to hide the virtual keyboard by clicking the return key. When this kill focus by return is set to true, then clicking the return key hides the virtual keyboard. Next, I'll select our button and I want to change its text property. Instead of saying button one, we'll have it say, say hello. And then I also want to change some text settings. Let me change the font to bold. And I'll change the font color from black to a nice blue. So now here is what our three components look like on the form designer. If we want to see what our user interface would look like on a specific Android device, we can change the view from master to a specific Android device, such as an Android 7-inch tablet. And here is what our user interface would look like on an Android 7-inch tablet, like a Google Nexus 7-inch tablet. So we have our edit box, our label, and our button. After you place components on the form, the C++ Builder IDE automatically sets names for the components. So for example, our button is named button1, label is named label1, and our edit box is named edit1. So to see or to change the name of a component, we simply click on the component 
And then either in the object inspector or on the structure pane, we can search for its name. And then if we need to, we could change the name of the component. Now the form on which these components are located also has a name. So if you select the background of the form on the form designer, and then you search for its name, here you will see the name of the form. You can also find the name of the form in the structure pane. And here we see for our form, we have our three components added, our button, our edit box, and our label. You can easily switch from the form view to the source code by selecting either the .cpp tab or the .h file tab at the bottom of the form designer. Or you can also press the F12 key to switch between the form designer and the code editor. So for example, if I select the .h file, it takes us into the code editor and the code editor displays the source code that the IDE has generated. Here we see in the .h file, we see the three components defined, edit one, label one, and button one. Currently our view is an Android 7 inch tablet, but you can also change the view to any of these other available Android devices, such as an Android 5 inch phone or an Android 10 inch tablet, or you can add your own customized view that is not shown on this default drop down list. The next step is defining an event handler for our button. Now you can define event handlers for your Android application in the same way you define event handlers for desktop applications. So for our button component, the most typical event is a button click. So if I double click on the button in the form designer, we see C++ Builder creates the skeleton code that you can use to implement an event handler for the button click event. So now let's implement responses within this button one click method. Let me first save this application project to disk. So I'll click save all. I'll give it a new folder to save the project in. I'll call it my say hello folder for the CPP file. I'll call it my unit main. For the pre-compiled header, I'll keep it as project one. And for the project file name, I'll call it say hello. Now that we have our project saved to disk, we can implement our response within this button one click method. So recall when we click on our button, we want our label to display the word hello plus the name we entered in our edit box. So we'll use our label one component. And as we see here, that while we are typing code, some tooltip hints appear, indicating the kind of parameter you need to specify. The tooltip hints also display the kinds of members that are supported in a given class. So here we want to set the text property of the label component to be equal to the word hello plus the value that we entered in our edit box plus we'll just add an extra exclamation point at the end. We can now test our Android mobile application as a Windows application first by selecting the 32-bit Windows target platform. So now our implementation of this application is finished. So now we can run the application. To run the application, we can either select the run button in the IDE, or we can press the F9 key, or we can select run, run from the main menu. So here's our application running as a Windows 32-bit application. The form comes up. We enter our name in the edit box. Click the Say Hello button. And we see our label does display Hello and the, and the name that we entered in our edit box, Hello Fire Monkey. So that's all working great. Lastly, we can now test our Android application 
running on a real Android device. So we completed our Android setup steps. So now I can switch from the Windows 32-bit target platform and select the Android target platform. And as we see here, I have my Android Google Nexus 7 tablet USB connected to my PC that's running my C++ Builder IDE, as we see here in the project manager. So now, when I run the application with the Android target platform selected, we will create the android.apk file that will get installed and run on my Android device. So here we see our say hello that APK file is being installed on my Android device. So now let me take a look at my Android device and, and show you it running. So here's our say hello application running on my Android device. I'll click on the edit box which brings up the keyboard. I'll enter the name Fire Monkey. And press the say hello button and we see our label does change to the word hello plus the name from our edit box so that's working great so that's all there is to it so we saw how simple it is using C++ Builder to create a multi-device application and then from the same code base create both a Windows application and an Android application and we could have did the same thing for an iOS application and a Mac OS X desktop.